All right, welcome to Froggy Love, soon to be Lunatic Froggy. This Lunatic. is my best friend, Draco Martin, one of them. What's up, everybody? Draco Martin over here. Hello, Froggy. How you doing? I'm doing good. What exactly is your channel about? Explain who Draco Martin is. Draco Martin started in 2015 watching this gamers, you know, do the stream back then when there was no monetization, no nothing. It was just a free for all. And I was like, you know what? I want to do that. So that's when with Draco Martin, the live stream channel really started popping as a live stream. By the way, the channel is 16 years old. I opened, I created it in 2008. So. Oh, damn. Yeah, one of the furby, I know. <laughs> I feel like so a, I feel like a boomer. I, I'm a boomer with the YouTube. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so back in 2015, I decided to go to California to uh, Bruno, where the YouTube base is located, and take my license as a YouTube content creator. So I passed the test, and by 2016, I was already certified YouTube content creator by Google Ads. And that's how I started my YouTube channel. No subscribers. I mean, I had a couple of subscribers because when I opened it, by the way, I'm, I, I'm a retired music video director. So I used to upload some of the content that I did back then on YouTube but when you could. Now you can because of the copyrights, blah, blah, blah. Right. So back back to the gaming. And you directed it. You should have like literally copyright in, uh, privileges on that shit. Not back then. Mm, yeah. Now yeah. you can. Now you can because now it's all digital. Back then you needed an agent and that agent needed to be certified and then you need to notarize it and send it to Washington and wait two months and blah, 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 blah. Now it just takes five bullshit. minutes. Yeah. Right. Now it just takes five minutes and ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, going back to YouTube, Draco Martin. So I went to the BitCon. There's a video on my channel. Uh I'll post it up later, send it to you. About what it is to go to a YouTube convention, a gaming convention, and and start meeting other people in the content. Because when I started the channel, I I was getting raided by who nowadays, and I can't even mention their name, uh, Creek Craft, one of the biggest Roblox player, almost reached about to reach 12 million subscribers. And from then, a couple of other big gamers that were on that team when PUBG came out, when H1Z, H1Z1 came out, uh, when Fortnite came out, I'm talking about like way back. And it was cool because, you know, we all used to rate each other and it, that's how right. the growth started. Right. Right. And then suddenly by 2018, it was like getting overpopulated. It was a lot of people trying to do the same thing, you know, gaming yeah. content and all that. So you notice that you were start you started growing and then suddenly it stops. It's literally stopped growing. Like nobody was subscribing to you. You'd lost subscribers, you'd lost viewers and what happened was that since this big channels that were like the ads that came in, that's when the ad apocalypse came in, uh, they started promoting the big channels and they were not focusing on us, the little people. Right. So they were pretty much putting us on the side, like, uh, we don't need you. And we're not put you, gonna put you on our algorithm, metadata, whatever cloud they have so you can, go back and get that feeling of getting new subscribers, new people coming in, showing out of nowhere, uh, just because they see your content, not because they were searching for you. Right. Well, so I not... totally understand the algorithm. That's the reason right. I'm changing my name to what I'm changing my name. Yeah, by the way, I got to do a new, a new song with that new name. Already? I have something in mind already. I'm still working on it because uh, it's it's a different concept. You're right. It's more about the lunatic concept. So I, I so, got to go with that flow. So in other words, Froggy gets another song for 
<laughs> no, we need to update it, so it's going to be 2025, so... Right, and uh, it, which, if people don't know, Draco and I have a bet. Was it 10,000 subscribers? I think so. If I hit 10,000 subscribers by 2025, he has to make me a song. If yep. he... I hit ten, or if I don't hit ten thousand subscribers, I have to make him a song, which means I have to learn how to do everything. I have to get the sound boards and everything. Which, once again, I'm really trying to improve my skills on a bunch of different things. So that is why I have to make him a song, and he ha or he has to make me a song. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay so we know what your what exactly is your channel about i know you do gaming well right now i'm gonna be changing uh from gaming to entertainment entertainment i'm sorry what? and it's gonna be dedicated more about socializing with other channels increase teaching them how to increase their algorithm how to work good thumbnails at the same time kind of follow the path that i've been doing because right now i overpass i think thirteen thousand. i think we're in fourteen thousand right now yeah so um yeah, yeah. did you by any chance happen to see lunatic dads and i's uh podcast yesterday i got a glimpse of it when i got the notification but it was already too late by, by my time I got to watch it. Afterwards. You know, uh, uh, the only reason I ask is because it was basically off of the same thing, because I know a lot of people that are going out there and they're trying to start a YouTube. And like me, I don't I don't know how to do all of that editing and stuff. So Correct. we were discussing that. So, yeah, it's pretty much a requirement. And this is why people ask me, well, well how do you know all this? Well, first of all, I went to college. I got a master's degree in MIU for multimedia production. But remember, back in my days, back when we were young, <laughs> back when we, were we young. didn't have all this cool stuff that you kids have nowadays, which makes it simple on the phone. No, no, no. We had to do it hand by hand, you know, and picture by picture, frame by frame, and just learn how to edit on a computer that was just brand new and nobody knew how to use, not even the teachers. <laughs> So it was a learning lesson no matter which way you turned. You know, we 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 took the hard pavement. You kids have it easy. Oh yes. Well, I I think I might be a little bit older than you there, Poppy. No, uh, no, I'm talking about the the, the, the audience is watching. Any anybody right. younger than us, you know? <laughs> Cause we, easy. Yeah. In between the iPhones and iPads and you know that that's one thing I was uh, they were asking me, they were saying, like, do you imagine having all this technology we got nowadays social media mostly like you can do everything from the phone back when i was you know with the big artists that are nowadays let's say that yankee bad bunny all of them when they were nobodies yeah you imagine having all of that because i got all the information on mini dv tapes but back in the day if you could do it like you can do it nowadays oh my god it would it would have been a different level it would have been so much easier for you now going off the basis that you actually went to mit miu miami international university and i know a lot of people who like me don't know how to do the little emojis and the thumbnails and the editing do you think by any chance you'd be interested in being hired for those type of things? Of course. I mean, I pretty much do it on my daily base for myself and other clients that I got on, on standby. And it'll be great because once you open a, a file, you want to continue working inside that file. You create more file, you're making more you're wasting more data space on your on your computer. How would you set how would somebody send like say this recording over to you in order for you to edit it? 
It could be depending on the quality. If it's the maximum I will take is 1920, 1080s, 60 frames. Uh, and it has to be through either Gmail or Drive, which is also right. on Gmail. Okay, because, you know, sooner or later, Froggy's going to have you, she's just going to pay you. Once I start getting paid, Froggy's just going to pay you to edit my videos. Good because, you, you know, damn all, I fucking love you. You are truly amazing. Um, hmm. And, yeah. Now, how much, for the emotes, like, to add to somebody's channel once they get monetized, like how I have the froggy on your channel. Mm -hmm. By the way, everybody, if you join his uh, channel, you get a froggy emote. Yep. <laughs> and it bounces. Yes, and it bounces. It's actually, it's actually a GIF. Yeah. So how would... Okay. How much would you charge for say somebody to do the emotes for somebody well, depending on on the specifics uh because the size is the requirements for an emote or the size for the youtube e emoji uh it's 1.1 aspect ratio which is the most the tiniest you can get so that means right. i gotta zoom in the into the little box that I'm gonna get. And then from that little box, I gotta <laughs> pixel, create by pixel, whatever it is that you want me to do. If you want an L, then I'll charge you 30 bucks for that. But if you want like the froggy, for example, that is a GIF, which I had to do frames, and then do another frame, then do another frame to make it up, jumping up and down, which that's animation, that's out of emoji, because yes. emoji doesn't move. A GIF move. A GIF, right. we're talking about 75, Fifty dollars, hundred dollars, depending on the frames. If you want the animation to do a lot of things, then the price increases. Okay, and that's why I wanted to get a basis so that way people really, are, you know, okay, this is how much it's going to cost me, and mm -hmm. they can plan ahead because you know there's a lot of poor people out there like me. Not all of us got to travel around the world with big famous stars. <laughs> Well, let's say you hit the lucky pot on that one. Yes, yes, you did. Yeah. Which is truly amazing. And I mean, I'm so proud of you for everything that you've accomplished in your life. Thank You're what? You, thank you. 37, if that. Just, I wish. About to turn <laughs> about to turn 39 next week. Oh, 39. Well, happy early birthday, everybody. Comment down below. Happy hey, birthday, Draco. Grazie. Grazie. But, I mean, for 38, 39, you're, like, ahead of so many people out there. So, got to give you your congratulations on that. Appreciate that. I keep it humble. I keep it humble in that sense. You know me. Oh, yes. I know you do. But I also want to know your greatest achievement. Hmm. You've done uh, so much. What's the know. greatest one of them all? I know. I can't, I... <sighs> Let Humanitarian or personal? Um, let's go one of each. All right. So let's start with the humanitarian because this was the first one. So this was 20, 2007. I was on my final thesis for my, you know, to get my degree to graduate. Right. And it was six, they gave the, your period of finishing the thesis. I'm talking about some, creating the idea, writing the script, doing the production, doing the editing, fixing everything up and handling in six months. Right. The final six months of six years of college. So I'm over here trying to think about stuff and what I'm going to do. Am I going to do a documentary? Am I going to do a movie? Am I going to do whatever? And suddenly somebody asks me, actually happens to be a, a, a friend that lived in the same building I lived in Miami. Uh, and he asked me, he worked for the United Nations. He asked me if I would 
be able to fly to Brazil to shoot a documentary. And I was like, well, well, of course. I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, that's exactly what I need. But again, the college was, uh, they were giving you a, a perimeter, a perimeter, ah, perimeter, thank you. Uh, you couldn't leave certain area of the Miami-Dade County state. And I was like, ah, this is in Brazil. How am I going to tell this to, to the dean? Like, okay, whatever. If I lose my chance, I come and take the next year college. Whatever. Right. I'm not going to I'm not gonna lose this chance. So I go to the dean, and the dean looks at the paper, and he's like, <clears throat> hand me over that piece of paper over there. So I grab it, hand it to him. He pops a pen. Here, take this to the president. I'm like... What is this? Oh, it means that you graduated. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so you graduated. Uh, like, wait, we just, you just barely told us what to do. I, we just finished the class an hour ago, and I'll go home, and I link up with my friend, and I call the dean, and I tell him, hey, I got this, this offer. And he calls me to go link up with him right away. I'm like, okay. So my college was like two blocks from my dorm or right. my apartment. So I walk, I'm just beat running over there and he's sitting on his desk and he's like, what's up? I'm like, I got this. And then he's reasons that he's from the United Nations certified by U.S. government and all that. He's like, brother, you surpass everybody in your class. You're free to go. So basically because you got that offer, you got to graduate early and go get that offer. Correct. Which is yeah. truly an amazing offer you can't pass up. Right, right. So it was a blessing in the sky. He didn't he even he even recognized it. He's like, bro, you're gonna do a, a great humanitarian work on this. You you surpassed everybody that is still trying to figure out what they're gonna do. Right. I literally have a United Nations certification. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Now let's get on to your personal. Well, wait, I haven't finished the oh, humanitarian you work. Finished? No, because then I go to Brazil and I was in a, I was I thought it was gonna be like a weekend thing or a week thing, and then it ended up being a six month. I I literally was in Brazil for six months. That's how I learned Portuguese. Yeah, I was. I know you know like what seven languages can read? Five. How many? Five. You can read five and know five. <clears throat> no, I I can read four. I know five. Okay. Which one can't you read yet? Japanese. Why? <laughs> because, I mean, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. It's, it's literally it's like people from out of space. <laughs> right. Do you know Be Chinese? It's kind of like the same because it's all right to left written and one word can mean a hundred things. Right. So you got to so, like put that one word. It's more of a native. You, you got to speak with a native to learn. Right. Portuguese, I got the advantage that I know Spanish. <clears throat> and since Portuguese is 70% Spanish, 30% French, I also know, happen to know French. It was kind of easy for me to catch up with the lingual. Right. I'll use every, a couple of I, beers and yeah. Everybody, every country has their own language. Yep. So. Even if it's the same, like it's different. It's a slang. Like you, if I go Mexican, I can speak Mexican Spanish. As I can speak Dominican Spanish. As I can speak Cuban Spanish. As I can speak Spanish from Spain. And ask, ask me which country that speak Spanish, and I'll translate it as their own. And why are you not reading books on like you know how like. Um, Audible. They have where they read mm -hmm. the books to you. Why are you not reading the books? Because I know there are so many people that would love to just listen to I love listening to like Spanish books because I love the language. Don't mm -hmm. understand it. I know si, senor, and poquito espanol. <laughs> Hablo poquito espanol. Si, wey. Orale. <laughs> Right. So I just like a Mexican way. But once again, I really love listening to the language. Yep. So why aren't you reading for like Audible and stuff? Mm, because I'm still learning. 
I'm still improving my linguistical skills. Once I dominate X or Y, the, or the ones I want to finish, in this case, at least to learn how to read Japanese. Jesus is so hard. <laughs> uh, it is because it's not the same when they speak it or you read it on the translation. It's not, and the, 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 even the translation is wrong. I'm like, that's not what he's saying. No, right. So at so, the end of the day, you're just like, <gasps> Yeah, it's a it's a hassle. I mean, I can go Italian, I can go French, I can go German, I can go Spanish, I can go English, I can go Portuguese. But we're now when we're switching to Asians or on a different country, oof, yeah. <laughs> that one's a little hard for you. Yeah, I mean, if if Spanish is hard for you, just imagine going on a on, a, on nope. another level. Nope. Nope. My my brain cannot compute that. It cannot. That's what I'm saying. Like I sometimes I, I'm trying to compute it. And I'm like, wait, but this means this, 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 and that. How can I say it to this person? Ah, anyways. Which is understandable. It's really hard. It is. So the Hamer um don't have me say that word. Where you were over there for six months. What did you all like video record and whatnot? Yeah, so the project was about how to influence the youth on the favelas, on not to do drugs, not to do violence, focus on the arts, the music, and the film. And there were was six months in the favelas. Well, actually, when I got to see all of Rio before he got nasty it was good back then um but i also got to be on the second largest slum on all of south america which is rosinha in brazil and i can say i got to see some really dark things over there yeah oh damn we yeah. don't have to go into that no uh, no no so let's hear about your personal best achievement well after I did all of those projects from starting from Brazil to all the way to music videos and touring and all that with artists. Uh, I don't know, I, I directed a lot of music videos and I, I gotta say that by 2020, which was for my last year in Miami, I did one of my biggest productions with 12 or well, seven of the biggest artists of the genre right now in reggaeton in five hours holy shit a hundred and twenty five thousand dollar budget in five hours gone <laughs> gone I was but, like, I, I can't, but, I, but i bet it was just a, honestly a truly amazing video that you did yeah, it came out so good that actually I'm still getting phone calls from people that want to produce video and stuff. But I'm like, nah, you don't, you're not on that level. <laughs> no, we got to be way up here to be Draco Martin level. No, no, no. Actually, I got, I got one that I'm doing next week for $800. So it's not <clears throat> the money, it's your quality of work. Uh, true. You got to see an aspiration in them. Um, uh, you know, you got to see the talent dripping out of them. Yep. And all of these guys, which, like I said, are the biggest nowadays in the genre, we all grew up together. Uh, true. Which really helps out a lot when you grow up with them and you really work with them. So, yeah, we've started from the bottom and now we're here. It's like Drake says. So, um, that's why I took a little break from the film industry because obviously I got this big label companies calling my phone 24 seven back then, almost two years now. And it was, uh, I, I didn't have that freedom, you know? It was draining and, on you. Yeah, it was too much drainage. And at the same time, I already achieved the things that I wanted. So it, they, they say, go get, get out of the game once you hit that, 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 that goal because if you keep trying you're gonna break a knee true 
I totally get that one. Sometimes you just got to hang up that one and work on a new project. Correct. And if you're ADHD, you work on 12 projects at the same time and you're going, okay, I'm done with all the Ds. Can I go into something else? <laughs> yep. Yep. Pretty much. Yeah, I know. It's, and that's what I'm doing right now. Just a couple of projects, projects here and there and just taking a life easier. You know, I've been doing this since I was 18. Yeah, that's got to get to the point where you're just like, I need a good break, a mental mm. break. Yep. yep. And is that where YouTube comes in, where you get that mental break, where you can just like game and have fun and chit chat with people? One, one thousand percent. It's it's pretty much my psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cemeteries are my psychiatrist. So, yeah, I, like I, I said. And the thing is, is. It's not really a psychiatrist. It's where we can go and we can just release all that is heart burden on our shoulders that we've been carrying right. with us. And as you said, YouTube is yours and going to a cemetery and just walking and is mine. We all have our niche of what releases that baggage. But at some point in time, we have to release that baggage. Yes. No, I agree. Everybody got their, their own little temple to go. Right. So in my case, YouTube is my little temple because it's like a baby. You know, I started, I seen it grow. It was from nothing. And, and nah, now I'm also creating new channels that are, that are getting, gaining subscribers. And that's the whole idea. Like once it starts, generating views and subscribers and monetization and all of that then you want to create other channels in case this one fails you you don't want to put all the eggs in one basket right just like as you as you know i have multiple i have this one and then i have my gaming one and yep. my gaming one specifically for gaming and the only reason why is because as we know there are people that don't like watching gaming nope so then actually got- the that uh, sorry to interrupt you the, the gaming okay. industry on youtube for some reason and this goes back on to when the prime of the game 2016 2017 was on back then you logged in you were the only one playing fortnite everybody watches you everybody went to to, to, your, to your channel no even the, nobody wanted to search for you Right. Now, uh, th- nowadays, you plug in, they don't even care. You're like, eh, you're the one mil billion that we got over here. Go, get away. And which then personality really hones in on the people that are gaming. Because if you ain't got a personality to go with the gaming, whether it be, oh, my God, I'm going to uh, aggressive or, you yeah. know, the layback. Hey, I just got shot. <laughs> Let yeah. Me go. Yeah, you have to either psychologically be ready for the comments and don't expect the growth. Expect that you're just doing it for fun. Because, yeah, right. Because if you take it personal, like, oh, I'm going to dedicate my life to this or whatever, whatever, buddy or lady, you're in a bubble and it's going to pop. Exactly. And then when you're sitting there and you're just upset spaghetti because you're so you honed in on, I want to do this instead of being like, okay, I, I'm really passionate about this, but I have all of these other things that I can do. Correct. It, when, you you got to just diversify. You cannot just stay. It's like you said, you got your gaming channel. Same as me. I got a gaming channel, which I haven't yet finish the thumbnails and all that work because again it requires a lot of work on designing and creating emojis thumbnails yeah, blah, blah, blah. Uh, talking about that um i actually know like four people and they'll probably message in the comments or message me that need help with like thumbnails and the banner and all that to make it look okay you know right you need i i ain't doing shit until i can legally change you know Oh, I'm allowed to change my name because rebranding is a pain in the ass, as you Yeah, know. it takes like 60 days or something like that. Uh, 28 now. Okay, back then it was like 60. I was like, wow. 
Right. But again, uh, as Lunatic Dad and I discussed, mm. and you'll hear it in the channel, is uh, you want to like put your niche into really hone in on like, okay, this is the concept I want. Mm. And, you know, get your banner out there, like all your stuff. But then also make sure that your name, like yours is Draco Martin. I don't I don't know what it is on the alg algorithm. I can look it up later. But like mine, he had to go down 21 people on the algorithm to find my channel. Mm. Yeah, it happens to me as well. You got to specific, like, I got to tell people you got to, if you want to search me, you got to type Draco with a K, as you can see the name right here. Draco with a K Martin live and I'm the first one to show up if you don't type the live there's a hundred Dracos and even songs from rappers and all that I'm like oh Jesus right which at this point in time changing your YouTube channel to something on a higher algorithm would be beneficial but once again a pain in the ass for you I'm still low enough on the totem pole that if I decide to go ahead and well I did decide but you yeah. know go ahead and rebrand all of my stuff it's the algorithm is totally easier to get through you know yeah yeah and it depends because you're starting i mean you, you you your channel uh is still wait, almost reaching the the 1000 subscribers once it reaches that you're going to notice a little bit of change in the algorithm right and with the new name and all of that if i do that with my name that has been out for many years and it's been growing thousands of subscribers in the past months, it will definitely destroy it. Exactly. So again, you want to do it early in the the channel. beginning. Right. Yeah. I mean You're I've doing been it doing right. it. I've been doing it for five years, but then again, I took a two year hiatus. Right, right, right. Yeah, you went AFK for a minute. Right. So okay. Out of all the places that you have traveled to, and I know you've traveled all over, what was your favorite place to travel? Venezuela. Why? Hmm. Because what? I felt I felt like going to the first movie at Jurassic Park. <laughs> you were ready for a dinosaur to just come. <laughs> yeah, that's all it needed. Just a dinosaur to show up, but everything else was spectacular i never seen nature at its fullest right and if you're a nature person it's gonna be more attractive oh i had everything no don't, don't get it wrong i had the nightlife the city the ferraris and all that you'll be surprised where you find a two million dollar car in the middle of nowhere i'm like wait i thought it was only in dubai <laughs> <laughs> nope it's out here <laughs> I'm like, no, we got it here, buddy. Oh, by the way, there's a three billionaire oil rig over there. I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> what was the scariest place you went to? Um, Haiti. Hades. Why Hades? Uh, across the border from Dominican Republic, I was in Cabarete, which is the board close to the border. Let's say it would be like Texas and Mexico. Yeah. So Cabarete is in Dominican Republic, and I wanted to go see Haiti because I'm right there. I'm like, why not? And <sighs> the first thing they tell me in the border is like, well, if you're not carrying a weapon or somebody a guard with you with a weapon where you cannot pass even though you got your passport and everything i'm like wait what this make no sense I'm like why are you telling me this i'm like yeah because you're gonna get kidnapped right once we let you go i'm like wait what <laughs> <laughs> what do you what? mean <laughs> what do you mean kidnap aren't you guys here to protect us i'm like nah buddy this is this is where we go from there on is you i'm like oh okay Right, well, so you're like, okay, so if I go here, I have a chance of being kidnapped. <sighs> yep. And like, and, and like, how high is that chance? And like, how high, how high is that chance? And he looked at me from the bottom to the top. It's like he said, ninety nine percent. Like, oh god. 
It sucks being a pretty boy. I guarantee, and this is no insult to myself or anybody that is on the bigger side or not the prettiest, because once again, it's all about the inside. If I were to walk to that border, they'd be like, yeah, 25%. <laughs> yep. And again, it's nothing against us. It's just, I guess, we're harder to kidnap, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's true. They'd rather kidnap a Puerto Rican to speak Spanish and they can be like, hey, and somebody they cannot communicate with. Right. They'd be like, huh, call home. I don't know the number. Oh, I know the one was in also in Venezuela, I think. They tried to kidnap me as well. I was in a motorcycle and they were following me for miles and miles and miles. I'm like, dude, I'm running out of gas. What am I going to do? So I'm doing 100 on the highway, trying to call my phone on a BlackBerry, put it, trying to put it on my helmet and call my body, be like, yo, I need safety. I need, I need. I need some place to, to hide the bike and get get rid of these guys. So they come to my apartment, I, door, the, the gate is open and all that. So I managed to escape that part, but they were chasing me and they do what is called Sequestro Express in Venezuela, which they shop your finger, they mail it to your family in the, with a car saying, if we don't get $100,000 in the next 24 hours, we're gonna send you another finger. And another finger. And another finger. Damn. Remind me not to go there. Oh, wait. I'd be safe. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Again, uh, it's put it like this. It's like I was driving this. Well, it's worth over there. This $70,000 bike, which in the United States would be like 18000 But in a third world country. You got money. No, it was a friend's. He let me borrow it. Right, but it it looked like you had money. Of course. That's the first thing that came to their mind was they put, pull out the AK-47s on my face. You're like, not mine, not mine. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm out. Woo! <laughs> try, try and catch me, you can. Well, I'm glad they didn't catch you, but I'm sure your dad would have paid it. I'm sure they wouldn't. I'm sure they would be like, nah, just chop a couple of fingers and we'll figure it out. <laughs> Your dad loves you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. So, in your travels, have you ever had paranormal experiences happen? Hmm. Well, yeah. I had a couple of. Uh, Thank you. We're going to need. I had a couple of experiences, I would say, all the way from Brazil down up to Germany, up to Holland, Spain, uh, United States, and even here in Puerto Rico. So, yeah, there have been some paranormal paranormal activities going on since, I don't know, to give it an example. Uh, one time I was sleeping, the camera suddenly turns on, and I'm like, okay. So I went to turn it off, and it turns on again. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take the battery out, disassemble the camera, the whole thing. And for some reason, it recorded. It kept recording me the whole night. I'm like, yeah, this is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> I like... literally took it apart. I'm like, how are you recording? It's like, oh, me. <laughs> Oh, we're going to make sure it records you sleeping. Yeah, it felt like like that movie Paranormal Activity. I was like, wait, I get, uh, th this is not right. <laughs> <laughs> How is it recording? <clears throat> oh, God. Now, I know on one of your streams, you talked about some of the scariest, like, other paranormal activity that happened to you, like going down a river, you were going down a river and there was paranormal activity. Activity. I want to hear about that. Going down the river. Well, it was, it was mostly like, uh, 
I don't know if it, it could be a combination of paranormal and spiritual because at first it was dawn. So we're waiting for dark to, to come in. And but at the transition of the sun was fading away, the dust was coming out. And I was like, I can hear like somebody. I can hear somebody. There's somebody in the woods or something. Somebody's lost. I don't know. But they were not screaming as for pain or loss or nothing. There, there was more like, come here, like Ben, Ben in Spanish. Like, come here. I'm like, huh. Well, whatever. We let it pass. We started bonfire. We just chilling on the fire and stuff. And suddenly, like that voice just started getting echoish, like a 360 echo. I'm like, okay, this is this is getting out of control. Like at first it was over there. <laughs> <laughs> at day at daytime now it's all over the place let's just i don't know let's just pop a beer just drink whatever and as we're drinking chilling and stuff a couple of rocks started moving i'm like okay <laughs> i'm running away from home i think it's time to go guys because you know that sound is still going on and whoever that creepy thing is out there i don't want to mess with chupacabra and <laughs> none of that so yeah was... I, I don't think Cooper Cobra or Big Boy or any of them called you and tell you to come here no 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 they, they would have already bit me by the neck I, I think Lady got... in the White does so uh, have but... you ever heard the Lady in the White stories the yeah Hollywood yeah yeah stories. they're always calling you right. that, 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 that's, uh, but it was weird because we were in a river I'm like why is the lady on the lake here <laughs> this is a river. Get out of here. You're like, go away. I don't need you. <laughs> Trying to get high. Let me, let me, damn it. Let me get high. So in other words, yeah. if you want to really experience some stuff, go down the river at midnight or at nighttime. Hmm. Yeah, I know. Uh, I kind of kind of tasted that water and I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Probably why you started hearing voices. <laughs> you yeah. never know what was in there. Never know and don't want to know. Okay, so do you like being a YouTuber? Yeah, yeah, I actually do. It's, you know, it's an achievement. Uh it's kind of like raising your own your own child. If you manage to grow it and, and get the potential that you work your sweat, tears, and blood for, then it's where worth. you want your channel to go. Yeah, when you get the peaks that you wanted to hit, it's like a celebration. Oh yeah, yeah. Just reaching the first ten thousand subscribers after almost a decade. At, at first, I thought it, was, it wasn't going to happen. I said for 2024, I just wish it was 2023. I remember it was October, October 2023. I I wrote a post saying, "Oh, my my wish for this year is for New Year's is to reach 10,000 subscriber goals, and we did it. I don't know how it happened, but it, it happened. So you gotta keep grinding. That's one thing that I learned. Like, yes, you need time to also <clears throat> lay off, do your things." Can I can't get that fresh mind, but don't like your paintings. Right, exactly. My paintings or the things that I do, but don't abandon your YouTube, even even if it's a short or a post or a comment. I use YouTube more. I'm using it as if 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 it was my Instagram or my Facebook. Right. You know, I, I'm I not know I see all your stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, literally. Uh, Draco posted on Instagram. Hold on, let me get to his YouTube. Because it's the same times post. I, a lot of times <laughs> I don't use my Instagram. It's the same post on Instagram. So yeah, I'm trying to keep. I mean, the Instagram you get the stories, but most of them I, that I do, for example, the ones that I've been doing with the lobsters, the, the underwater diving, stuff like that, just different adventures, just to show people that, yeah. Uh, doesn't have to be just in front of a computer. It's like you do when you go visit the graves or go to the haunted, abandoned places. You know, you I know, go I'm out. I'm going to Goatman's Bridge here next there's, month. 
there you go. See, so things like that is what really inspires you to, you know, continue grabbing a camera, do your film, come back and put it on and then talk about it on our live stream. That's amazing. Exactly. Um, I know that uh, with your channel, you do a lot of stuff and you just showed some of the amazing artwork you do. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about doing a giveaway with your artwork? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Once I get the new setup, because I'm going to be having a new setup on February 15th. Y'all are going to be noticing a new change coming up. Um, I will be giving away some arts. I will be raffling uh, a couple of designs that I have. And at the same time, uh, depending, we're going to be, there's going to be a, a bidding or a bet on who wants to get the biggest canvas for the lowest price. Yeah, you know damn well your homie girl right here is out of anything that includes money. Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> but you know damn well I'll be there for you. Oh yeah, yes, the support is more than enough. Even I'm if I don't do a view or nothing, just having you and the people that admire the channel have been supportive for so long and so many years, even on my downfalls and everything. That's all that really matters to me. So which by the way, I'm still your mem a member on your channel. I had You're the oldest member on my channel. <laughs> That's I, 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 can, I can see it. I'm like, wow, Froggy's like the top tier queen of the, of the members. <laughs> hey, what can I say? I love uh, my Drake and Martin. And matter of fact, on a lot of streams, I actually brag about how wonderful you are with your editing, your emails, your. Grazie. I'm always bragging about you. I don't know if you've noticed, but. There's Poppy. Yep, that <laughs> that became famous on, with the on the group chat, yep. the paranormal channel. I was like, Poppy, Poppy, Poppy. Even the boys are saying Poppy. I'm like, Oh God, no homo. <laughs> You're right, because instead of saying Hey Draco, I always say Hey Poppy because that's no, but you're good. You're a female, but coming right. from a guy is it's weird. It's different. Uh, it sounds kind of itchy in the ear. I'm like, ah, I don't know. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Y'all can, can call me whatever. It's all good. Okay. Sorry, I'm eating. Um, what One is price. your favorite game to play? Hmm. You know what? I was asking myself that question the other days. I've been streaming a lot first shooter games for years okay. call of duty battlefield this and that fortnite. uh fortnite you know everything shooting games and then i started playing diablo you know third person games and all that i started getting more into story games because obviously shooting games yeah just, if you got your team to have fun it's great you got right. your four, your three players, four team member, whatever. You're having fun. Everybody's talking. Yeah, da, 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 da. yeah. You got the win. It's awesome. But it gets tired after you play six, seven, eight, nine, ten rounds. Right. You know? Well, that's kind of like us with the Dead by Daylight. It's such a repetitive game that it's like, oh. Correct. Correct. But at the same point in time, we're so out there, just wild. Ooh, touch me, baby. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. If you have, okay, it's not the same playing solo mode. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, if you had your buddies with you, that's cool. It's awesome. It makes it fun and entertainment. You can go for hours. Doesn't matter. You don't even win a dots, uh, uh, whatever. But if you're playing solo for three hours, you're really not doing nothing. Unless you're a super hyper pro gamer, that's a whole different story. Right. I'd still, even if I made it to like 10 billion and I became a pro, I'd still prefer to have my friends up there because I hate gaming alone. Right, right. And, I, and you can tell the big gamers, they also got their buddies. 
Mm -hmm. So they don't play alone either. Exactly. I have a lot of friends that I, um, or I have a couple like games that you have to play by yourself. But again, it's story based mode where you have to follow it and do whatever. <laughs> That's where I was going. So when you ask what type of game you like, I'm like, okay, it, it's hard to say one game because I do like the Call of Duty zombies and all that. Um, but the story mode games, it gives you more of an essence to play the length of the game, not mm -hmm. just stay there and repeat and repeat and repeat. You're actually improving your character, getting new wardrobe, whatever the game is about. But you know, it's it's also good to be versatile on the gaming. Don't just stick with one game. That's the problem with the gamers. They just stick with one game. Until a new game comes out, and then they move to that game. And, I mean, unless, like, again, unless you hit the goal or somebody big rage you and you get a bunch of followers that just wants to watch that one game, and you're the one lucky out of the million. I say it myself, but if you want to improve your quality, you got to be versatile. See where your audience is following you from. Is it Roblox? Is it Fortnite? Is it Call of Duty? Is it RPG games? Is it, is it Mario? I don't know. Is it if you're doing gaming? I'm talking right. about gaming. Now, obviously, if you're doing entertainment, like we're, you're, you're doing the paranormal channel and all that, that's a whole different league. Exactly. Well, see, and with my paranormal channel, it will now be a paranormal plus channel where I do other things besides just paranormal. Right. And that's because there's only so much paranormal I can do at this point in time. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because back in the day when uh, the Osborns and all of those, do the, 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 you remember, remember they had a bunch of paranormal shows? Yep. Where are, where are they now? They burned out. Right. Because they only did paranormal. They only, yep. And I don't want to only do paranormal. I have so many different niches that I love doing. And as a matter of fact, this is one of them where I sit down and I pick people's brains. Yep. Because everybody on, of my friends calls me the research queen for a reason. I love so. researching and learning and, you know. And I know one of the biggest brains besides Lunatic Dead is yours. Because you're so versatile and you know so much. Like, well, thank you. Honestly, the knowledge you have could truly inspire somebody to be something so amazing. Yeah, I believe that in that too and appreciate those kind words. Well, you're very welcome. They are the truth. Hey, Amen. That's what's up. Yes, it's. I agree with that, and also uh, mashing up with, you know, the teachings and the knowledge to that we know from all of these years that we've been doing this YouTube thing, um, to also help people increase their channel, keep their mor moral up. Because sometimes you you lose your morals, you lose your hopes, you lose your faith, and it's hard. I've been there. We all been there. We've all but, been there. That's why yeah, I took a three month or two year hiatus. Well, two what three years? Mm -hmm. Almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost three I need, years. I I needed it though. I mean, I we had all, a lot going on. What about me? You know what happened to me? Right. Exactly. You've had a lot going on with losing your girl and all of that. My it, wife. Your wife. It, it's devastating. Yeah. And then Tito and then my grandma. Ugh. All at the same time. It was crazy. But, you know, you, the one thing I learned is. And then you have Froggy coming through. Want to talk? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But one thing that I learned when people say you hit, hit rock bottom, uh, I can't lift up. I can say that I, I figured out a new method. I started digging a hole. 
and start going deeper and deeper and deeper. And what did I found? I found diamonds. Exactly. What did, I, what did I do? I grabbed those diamonds, those those, you know, still on the on the raw diamond, and I went up. And I brought those diamonds up. And then everybody started saying, Oh my god, this guy got diamonds. Oh, he's rich and all that. No, those are sweat, tears, and blood that brought it over here. Buddy. Those are blood diamonds, straight up 100 percent Those are blood diamonds. Yep. They came from your blood. They come from your sadness. Yep. They... Yep. 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 So it's not. It's not. It's never an end. You're gonna hit rock, rock bottom, but you can also not deviate yourself with the words of "Oh, I can't get up. I can't do this. I can't do that." Listen, grab a shuffle and keep digging down. You're gonna find something. When you find right. that, go up and give it and show it to everybody. Then you're gonna exactly. feel proud. At the end of the day, even if you're stuck and stuck and you're just in that rut, throw some kitty litter down and get out of that rut. Yep. And I I tell a lot of my friends that they're like, Well, we're stuck. I'm stuck. I don't yep. know what to do. It's like, okay, so here's XYZ. Yep. Pick a uh, pick a subject and I can help you. Yep. Because once again, I'm the research queen. But when it comes to myself, it's like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. No, we all have our own ways. And, and we all know how. To, one thing that I learned is how could, can you control that second you? Because we all have ourselves and the second us. Right. You know, that second us sometimes takes over. And I'm not talking about demons and angels, nothing religious or science. We're talking about psychiatric, psychologic, human base. Well, we have, we, we have literally the person that's, I can, I can, I can. And then we have that little ear, voice in our ear, I can't, I can't, I can't. Right. So you're always going to be dealing with that in your life. It's a human nature thing about how nowadays society has poison us because 20 years not even 20 i'm going too far 15 years ago people were still playing outside with with toys and basketball sticks. and all that stuff if now, you now were what really poor, you were playing outside with sticks or sticks but you were still touching grass how many kids nowadays let me tell you an example my nephew 13 40 he's about to turn 14 and he still don't know how to boil an egg what is wrong? The parents ain't teaching their kids. Yeah, of course it is. I also blame it on the parents and all of that. But it's we're living in this society that everybody wants to be either a YouTuber or they just want to stay home and be introverted or they're this, confused. This, this is the best. That, it's this is the reason why. Right here, your cell phones. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I feel really stupid because <laughs> my son's 16 and he can cook a full meal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not our fault. It's not the parents' fault because, listen, society has put in us between the wall, against the wall and the sword. Yep. Why? Economic has gone up the roof. Uh, it's not like back in our day, in their parent days, where... They could buy a car for five thousand dollars, a house for ten thousand dollars, a whole family breed of ten children, and, and take them all to school and all that for ten thousand dollars. Nowadays, right. one kid is a million dollars. Right, it is honestly, and I have and two of them. So that, I... that's what I'm saying. Like, how can I? And that's one thing that bothers me about the old generation. They don't understand that they got it easy. They they, they put, put it easy. to us hard. That, but also you got to look at the aspects that nobody really wants to work anymore. You got the silent quitting. Right. You got the people out there that who want to work but can't find a job because 
of this discrimination, that discrimination, age discrimination. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing about, that's why I left United States. It was one thing that was bothering me so much that I couldn't take it because I come, I go, I've been around the world twice. I'd seen the European culture, the advantage of how civilized people are all over the world. Even in South America, in a third world country, I had more fun and freedom than I had in the United States on all 50 states. And that's because the United States is not free. No, it's not the land of the free. It's the land of the debt. Yep. <laughs> I totally get that. All right, honey, we are coming up to one hour. Is there anything you would like these wonderful people who watch this to know about you? Uh, well, go check out my channel. Uh, please support Froggy on her new channel coming up. And stay tuned for the new songs that are coming out and the new artworks that are going to be giving to Miss Froggy, the beautiful lady over here. Aww. Yes, I can't wait for the new song you got coming out. I love the I love the other one. I when I'm like going to bed and I really just or actually when I'm trying to stay up and like right vibe out, I just throw it up and I listen to it. That's awesome. I appreciate I'm trying that. to figure out how to edit it into like the back of my games. But oh, I it's easy. Um, go to keep. Um, I'll well send me a message in Discord. I'll tell you how to do it. I can't okay. say it over here because we, we're going to be cheating. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Draco Martin, if you go to his, if you find his channel, you can find his Discord. If you find his Discord, you can go ahead and hire him for lessons or just to edit videos. Anything or, you want, I got you. Right. And you can, I will have his YouTube channel, his Instagram, and his Twitter. I know he has a Twitter. Yep, or the X, on, whatever they call it. Yeah, I have you on everything. I will have mm -hmm. it all linked down in the description box. So, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming up here. Give me a second. I'll end the recording. And then I will go ahead and we'll do an after call. Okay.